Okay, and we're live. So welcome to the second TAD Summit Asia keynote. We're fortunate today to have Richard Dim, who is the Global Director of Partnerships at Affigate, who I've known for quite a few years now. That's now, we're going to get straight down to business with the presentation. Now, if you do have any questions for Richard as he was running through his presentation, because we are live, please tweet them using the handle TAD Summit. So at T-A-D-S-U-M-M-I-T, -M -M or just use the hashtag. I'll find both, uh, hash T-A-D-S-U-M-M-I-T. -M -M I'll be checking Twitter throughout the presentation. Now, Richard's going to be presenting on Appagate's journey from in-house initiative to global powerhouse. Now, this is something that I've been following since its inception. So I'm really looking forward to uh, hearing uh, what Richard has to say. And without further ado, over to you, Richard. Great. Thanks, Alan. Good morning, everyone. So uh, let me get the presentation up uh, and then I'll walk through the um, presentation. So. Okay, uh, can you see that, Alan? Yes, I can. I just had to unmute myself. Fantastic. Okay, so um, um, as I was presented by Alan, um, I'll be walking through the kind of Epicos journey um, from starting from as an in house initiative, going to where we are heading towards at the moment. Um, I think our experiences from from where we started really two, three years ago to where we are now is going to be quite interesting for um, in terms of how we can enable the telcos to be um, focusing more on the uh, monetization and, and, and driving the growth in, in this region. So let me um, uh, move ahead with this. So this is a quick introduction of um, Epigate. Uh, we are part of the Asia group. Um, and you can see that we have the mobile operate, operating companies um, on the left here across the region with Cellcom, um, Excel, Smart across um, different countries. Um, in addition to that, uh, we have Asia the Digital, which has been really focusing on driving the digital business and um, transformation um, for the region uh, and for the um, Asia the Group. Um, as part of that, there are really three, three main businesses that's driving that initiative, uh, which is Epigate. Uh, focusing on the kind of API services and platform um, and enabling the kind of the digital ecosystem um, as part of that business. We have Boost as kind of the, the e-wallet and mobile financial services play and ADA um, that's focusing on analytics and, and advertising. So as we kind of mentioned before, um, it's been a quite an interesting journey from um, really the idea might um, use case that a lot of people have heard of and the, and the success around that in, in dialogue in Sri Lanka um, where we're enabling a lot of the kind of the, the developers and non-developers to be able to monetize using a, a, a platform to create API services, very simple API services that we expose to be able to be monetized using voice messaging, etc. So we've taken that kind of concept as an internal kind of experiment and incubation uh, and we've developed the last couple of years where we've developed the kind of the MIFE services um, in 2014, where on top of that platform, we started to develop the um, digital ecosystem on top of that platform where uh, we had um, different kind of content, uh, entertainment, uh, and going forward, we have kind of different services going to different segments in the, in the industries, such as the enterprise uh, and different areas as well. And in 2015, uh, we also acquired the um, WSO2 um, telco as a, as a joint um, uh, investment into that area. And putting all three businesses together uh, in 2017, what we developed is a business model that really focused from digital transformation to really enabling uh, you know, digital monetization for a lot of the um, you know, customers that we work with. So that, that's been the kind of the key kind of vision and objective for um, Epigate. So um, as part of that, essentially, um, currently we're focusing very heavily on, you know, the Epigate Mint, uh, which is a kind of end-to-end, -end, uh, you, know, uh, you know, hub services that's focusing on content and services uh, in this region. So we are focusing on things like the, the games, um, entertainment contents, 
uh, and various other kind of um, you know hub services that's driving a lot of the monetization services today for for a lot of our operators today. Um, a APX uh, is another kind of the products that we're focused on. That's as part of enabling the um, digital transformation with our, with our gate, uh, gateway services and, and the platform around that. And Epic Ad Go uh, is, is the third component of the business where we're focusing on the platform for the developers and building the community for kind of the new innovation service that we are focusing on as well. So um, if essentially, when we're kind of looking and engaging a lot of customers, uh, we, we can see from an from executive perspective, there's a lot of different perspectives um, and, and views on you know, driving the change, driving the digital transformation and, and kind of driving the growth around this. And, and everybody has kind of the different perspective of the key focus. You know, the CEOs mm -hmm. is focused on growth, uh, the CIO and so forth looking at kind of efficiencies, looking at kind of digital trust um, and, and so on. So, right. So, so the key thing is how do, how do we bring kind of the, all these kind of different concerns and objectives and kind of be able to really help the um, the kind of the operators to drive the growth um, that we're looking for. And, and this is kind of a good kind of background to the kind of the, the challenges for the for the industry. Um, where more and more, as we kind of discussed in previous um, webinar, that we're focusing a lot in investing in the infrastructure, such as you know the three G, four G infrastructure, um, and in terms of driving the new growth, um, focusing on really data growth, it's not really um, driving the kind of the, um, providing the, the growth that the, the operators are looking for, because more and more of these um, kind of the revenues and the data, um, data revenues are kind of being um, dropping in terms of price um, because of the, the market saturation around the data growth. And it really means basically um, a really, you know, fundamental change in terms of how we look at, you know, new business model to be able to drive growth uh, and shifting away from the traditional kind of telco kind of businesses today, where it's consuming more and more of the kind of the, the cost and, uh, you know, the cost to um, provide the services, which is continually growing. Um, but the revenue side is not, not significantly changing to support that. So um, the key really for the next couple of years um, is really to come up with a new way of um, doing business. So, uh, you know, I think the key point here is that we don't have, you know, a lot of time to be able to do that. We don't have time to go through many, um, a lot of those kind of the digital transformation next couple of years to drive this. And it's something that it's an urgency now that we need to kind of act and come up with a new way of, um, you know, doing business and collaborating. So what we've been focusing on in terms of Epigate is kind of the, the our, our vision for 2020, which is kind of shifting shifting the focus on digitization to monetization, and really kind of looking at ways of enabling the, the telcos business um, quickly, and, and not really waiting for everything in terms of digitization to be finished, because it's really an ongoing process um, that what we've experienced through Asia the Opcos that this is a continual process of digitization um, and, and we really can't be basically continuing with this on and on. We have to shift more focus on building new business model uh, and driving the monetization um, play as well. So that's the kind of thing that we are focusing at the moment is, uh, in terms of Epigate. So this is an example of kind of the ecosystem that you see. Um, you, you know, at the bottom you, you have the range of kind of the mobile operators that we're working with at the moment across the region. And we are horizontally expanding. So not only from Asia to Opcos, we are expanding through our hub to hub partnerships into different regions, creating kind of horizontal expansion into the coverage. But essentially we have in, in, in the kind of the operators today, we have different layers of, um, um, you know, um, vendors that, that are providing kind of the DCB um, APIs or different kind of APIs with um, API platforms. Um, you have different kind of merchants uh, and uh, in the content aggregators, and you've got different kind of, um, you know, um, content players like Tencent, CMG, IGG, that really wants to be able to enable a quick way of um, um, going to market for a lot of these regions and be able to, um, you know, drive their business um, very quickly without going through, you know, point to point. Um, kind of integration with the MNOs, 
uh, and complications of doing a lot of the commercials uh, to enable and launch their services. And if, if you kind of look at where they are at the moment, um, it, it's really a difficult thing to be able to connect uh, northbound partners to really to southbound, um, you know, um, you know, operators who are um, uh, launching these services. So trying to go through this kind of maze or different kind of ways to connect the, the, the kind of the partners to the end users has been quite difficult with um, the way it's kind of set up at the moment. So from Epic's perspective, um, what we're trying to do is help to connect a lot simpler, right? What we want to be able to do is basically have um, a single platform, uh, a simple way to have a, a, a contract and have the capabilities within the platform that really helps to enable the kind of the, the content and northbound partners to be able to access the, the coverage they want in a simple, uh, simple, simplistic way and have the kind of the insight to go to the market in terms of the, the customer needs, uh, in terms of the, the, uh, the insight to the market, what's driving the kind of the business, what are the demands. So it's really focusing on basically really connecting and providing the kind of the, the analytics and insight to be able to access and then helping them kind of monetize, which drives the, you know, kind of the, the traffic. So AXP that I kind of mentioned before is really kind of the um, enabler for digitization. Um, that's a kind of the first first step as, as kind of our engagement to a lot of the operators because we want to make sure um, that they have the kind of the capability to be able to um, integrate internally to all the kind of um, the, the backend systems for the network and IT, make sure that integration is standardized, that the provisioning is happening quickly and there's agility in terms of the internal infrastructure and then we make sure that if there's an external gateway that enables and kind of exposing that capability so that uh, the kind of the, the internal ecosystem is ready for uh, monetization. So that's a kind of the first thing that we do. Um, and then obviously um, our kind of the value um, around this is making sure that we have all the kind of the Pacific, Telco Pacific connectors uh, that's um, pre-built across different kind of vendors that we are working with, a lot of the vendors like Huawei, Ericsson, um, and having these kind of connectors in place so that we can have uh, a simpler integration and we can enable the service a lot quicker in terms of time to market. Um, so what that happens and that enables the kind of the, the ecosystem for Epic 8 Mint, um, which is a digital ecosystem that we will start to drive the new business um, across um, the operators. Um, and what we've kind of looked at over the, over the uh, last couple of years is we really focus on the customer journey of, um, of, of this consumption of these kind of um, services like games um, and entertainment services because um, there are a lot of kind of challenges along with this. Um, example of that is uh, mobile game. Uh, mobile gaming is kind of is massive at the moment in this region and other parts of the region. And it's, it's growing year by year significantly um, around this region and globally as well. So that's one of the kind of the key segments we've been focusing on. And when we looked at the kind of the customer journey of um, mobile games and uh, how does the telcos really differentiate against the other other kind of the uh, ways to consume the, uh, the games, for example, through the Google Play and other kind of stores, uh, what we found is that uh, there's a lot of challenges with um, services like DCB, for example. Um, and there's really kind of a lot of, um, you know, very little differentiation against, you know, how we provide the payment um, to the unbanked market. Um, there's all the complexities and steps involved with, um, you know, really basically allowing the consumers to be able to access a game that they really want to play um, and continue that experience. Uh, and there's really poor conversions of various, um, various factors, which I'll get into quickly. And what we've seen basically from our study and insight is that through um, the initiation of the payments through mobile payment um, to you know, different kinds of um, authentication uh, of the user, different kind of attempts and charging, for example, the conversion is very low. Um, it's, 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 in the, it's roughly about 1% 1 1 conversion, which is very low because of the multiple steps that's involved with um, you know, mobile payments at the moment. So essentially, um, looking at the customer experience, what we start to do is really 
I look at the whole customer journey through, um, you know, um, direct carrier billing. And we looked at how basically we can improve the experience through making sure that we have the right understanding of the segments that we want to acquire in terms of user acquisition. So we want to have smart acquisition about the users that we want to um, um, engage. Uh, we want to go through basically, instead of having authentication through a lot of the service like SMS and OTP, for example, uh, we looked at the journey of how do we can, can really ensure that we authenticate the user um, through uh, mobile authentication and new, new ways of kind of authenticating through the whole process and making sure once you're authenticated, how do we ensure continuity of um, payment if let's say the, the balance of the, um, the, the, um, the, the balance that you've got in your mobile account is low, how do we continue the payment with uh, payment continuity solutions and so forth. Um, and really develop a kind of a, a solution that's packaged mm -hmm. to ensure that there's a clear differentiation between the telco services uh, through payment versus other OTT kind of um, experiences as well. Okay. Um, so essentially through that, um, as an example, um, that significantly helped the kind of the, the, the experience. Um, and we're seeing a lot higher kind of the uh, successful trans uh, uh, transactions that's happening at the moment in terms of payment, in terms of authentication. And in addition to that, now we are in, in a kind of developing new additional kind of experiences and services for um, taking this kind of capability into different kind of segments, for example, in entertainment and banking industry, where um, they are also looking at um, customer authentication, looking at trust scores, looking at different kind of ways of um, uh, monetizing this kind of kind of the telco um, data and um, um, you know user information which is used for the kind of the consuming of games at the moment but it can be applied to the different kind of use cases going forward so i think that's a kind of the potential upside to um, how we can drive and kind of shift the focus of the telco service into different kind of segments going forward And what we're doing is, um, as I kind of highlighted before, we are kind of taking this capability and really kind of expanding across not just this region, we are then taking kind of um, with the hub to hub connections, we are connecting to um, large partners in Middle East. We are also connecting with the partners in Africa and different kind of regions. So it allows a new way of business to flow. You know, for example, um, when we are looking at uh, contents for games in China, for example, with all of their kind of the Chinese migrants and workers and, and different kind of kind of the, the tourists that are kind of going to different regions, we can provide different services from the Chinese uh, game provider, for example, all the way down to the Middle East and vice versa. We can have kind of the Pacific kind of content in the Middle East coming to um, Asia. And that kind of flow is starting to break down the barriers between the, the regions. Um, as well as different kind of across the different industries, which is what we need basically kind of to come up with new innovative services um, and come up with um, creating a basically a platform ecosystem um, that kind of uh, you know, organically allows kind of new innovative services to kind of grow. Um, and as kind of mentioned before, we are expanding um, and we are continuing to do so um, quite rapidly. Um, Orange, Verizon, uh, different kind of operators in this region and across. And what we're going to see going forward is, um, in addition to kind of telco services and payment that we looked at, uh, we'll start to look into uh, mobile identity and security, uh, location-based services, different kind of API services that, that, that we can kind of um, start to deploy uh, in this region and across. And, and there's a lot of use cases like Orange Bizarre in which we kind of work with them in terms of enabling their new business. Uh, Bizarre is, is similar um, to what we are doing. They're a digital enabler uh, and startup for Orange Group, uh, focusing on the, the African continent. Um, and basically they are enabling um, very similar kind of payment platform um, across the different, um, different um, regions and countries in, in Africa. Um, providing content and, and payment services as well, um, and, and, and so forth. So um, I think that gives you quite a kind of a, a snapshot of our journey and where we are heading. And I think that's part of also where the, where the industry is heading is 
we are starting to break down the barrier within the telco industry, becoming more agile. We are kind of opening up to collaborating more um, and, and, and starting to basically enable kind of new innovative services to kind of go, uh, which is what we're seeing in terms of the telco industry at the moment. Excellent. So, Thank you, Richard. That was a great presentation. Now, <clears throat> I have to admit, in several of my conversations with operators, both in Middle East and yes. in Africa over the past couple of months, your name has come up. So uh, you're okay. definitely getting your name out there. So uh, it's nice to see that uh, link between your presentation and what I'm seeing in the field. So what I'd like yes. to do uh, after that great presentation is just ask a couple of quick questions. So. You know, we've already mentioned it, but I just want to, you know, get a little bit more uh, depth. Is you know, what regions beyond APAC do you think Appigate will play an important role, and what parts of your offer? Because you've got a lot of pieces in the APAC yeah. offer. What parts of your offer will matter most in those regions? Yeah, I think in terms of kind of looking beyond APAC, um, um, our strategy is really. Um, speed. Uh, we need to move quickly in terms of getting to access to new markets. Um, the areas that, that we are kind of really focused on is Middle East and Africa at the moment. Um, because I think that strategy is very simple. We want to not grow um, organically. We want to move quickly and work with our partners, right? So um, the partners we are looking at is Huawei um, and a lot of different kind of uh, um, system integrator partners that really have already access to a lot of these markets. and and. And, and regions like Africa is, is very interesting because they're not only a developing uh, market, but they are embracing a lot of this kind of new innovation um, that's typically been quite, uh, took a lot of time in this kind of region, but you know, the speed in which they're adapting uh, innovation across, not just payment in terms of mobile money, which you, you, know, you hear a lot of success stories in, in Africa around mobile money, um, but we're starting to see different kind of innovations coming through for different kind of content coming through, uh, different kind of API services they're embracing. And it's really um, getting the kind of the small, medium um, enterprise and a lot of small businesses in Africa that are coming up with lots of in innovative ways of doing business, right? And they're really kind of really accepting the telco as the enabler for them to do this kind of business. So um, I think that's a great environment in which Epic a can play. Um, and certainly that's an area that we will look into in terms of payment services. Uh, we'll look at um, potential other ways of doing maybe e-wallet to e-wallet integration in different regions where uh, I think it's going to come up to different segments like migrants who are moving around. Um, that gives them access to uh, easy ways of transferring money, easy ways of consuming or paying utility bills in their homes, back at home. A lot of different ways to be able to do cross-border kind of transactions which is, I think, where we are heading towards uh, making that a lot easier for a lot of the kind of the, um, the our users. Yeah, no, I, I fully endorse what you're saying, especially around Africa. Uh, yeah, MTN South Africa have been part of TADAC uh, Global yeah. for many years now. I mean, they have a massive developer community there. Uh, and, you know, they are you know, one of the largest, if not the largest uh, location we run with close to 200 you know, developers hacking there. Um, yeah. You know, for this year, I mean, you know, they've launched across MTN Group uh, IOBA, which is their messaging platform. They're linking that into their mobile payments and to the chat bots. So again, we're seeing stuff that's far more in advance than yep. a lot of other markets. So fully endorse what you're Absolutely. saying, Richard. Uh, and I think you've touched upon it, but you know, I just again just explore in a little bit more depth. I mean, there is a massive and relatively well-paid segment across Asia and yep. into Africa and the Middle East. So yes. it's not just Asia, which are migrant workers. Yes. Uh, and I'm just interested, you know, because this must be an important segment for Appigate. Uh, I'm just interested in how you help M&Os better meet their needs. Yeah, I think it's kind of, um, um, kind of um, something I touched on before. I mean, we have lots of... Uh, migrant workers in Philippines, for example, going to the Middle East, there's a huge segment of them. And um, like, like I said before, uh, we understand that and they, they have specific needs that they, they want to do into simple transactions or money transfers back to their home. Mm -hmm. um, they want to be able to um, 
pay for you to lose and bills for the families yeah. that want to be able to make phone calls to them, etc. So, so, so many things that that's focused for a lot of these migrant um, workers that are moving around uh, in, in, in across of Asia regions as well as Middle East and probably Africa going forward as well. Um, so we are very focused on doing that. So we want to make that experience very seamless. So we are working with uh, you know a lot of the, the kind of the different. Um, operators to create that coverage. So we are doing the hub to hub connections that gives that connects the coverage together. Then we are building service on top. So we are doing, for example, uh, wallet integration with Singtel, for example, which is something that we kind of um, announced in Mobile World Congress. We've recently done that with Paytm in India, and we'll continue to do that in terms of making sure that we have uh, kind of the the wallets and ecosystem that connects them across the coverages and we'll start to build payment services, the content and different kind of, you know, um, you know, services on top that really helps them to be able to um, um, provide a service they're looking for in terms of migrant as well as other kind of, um, you know, um, consumers that's moving around the different kind of regions. I mean, it is really becoming a global society, really. And we're really just focusing on enabling that digital society and enabling kind of um, a lot of these cross-border kind of um, services and break down the barriers. Exactly. Because I, I, and it's dealing with human issues. I mean, you raised it. It's not just wallet to wallet. But it's yes. paying for utility bills. Somebody yes. that's working up in another country, they don't necessarily want to dump, you know, quite a bit of money into a wallet that then gets used in ways they can't control. They okay. preferably have the mortgage or the rent or yes. you know, the electric utility bills paid yes. for rather than yes. going elsewhere. I think Absolutely. You know, those human issues, I think yes. it's very important. And having somebody like Appigate that can solve the human issues it, on a hub to hub basis, I think is yeah. critical because that has been, yeah, I mean, because you know, just paying utility bills. I remember 20 years ago <laughs> discussing this at the, you know, when we were like premium SMS payments. And yeah. like, yes, that's great. But actually, the real problem we need to solve is, you know, getting the, you know, sort of utility bill paid rather than paying the uh, off license for yet more alcohol. Yeah, you know, I mean, Absolutely. you might laugh at that, but that's the reality in solving those real human problems. So it's great to hear. Uh, yes. And again, as I said, in the conversations I've had over the past couple of months, it's been very heartwarming to see Appigate being mentioned in those discussions in both Africa and Middle East. So well done, Richard. Thank you. Thanks, Ellen. Um, again, a great presentation. And again, thanks so much for uh, giving your time in providing this uh, keynote. No problems, and I look forward to um, talking to uh, talking more at the um, uh, Fed Summit. And I think we'll be going forward. Uh, we'll also be at the uh, Mobile Congress uh, Shanghai. So I'm happy to discuss more of the people who will be there, and we can have further discussion about really shifting the focus, like you said, in terms of you know internal kind of focus of digitization, to looking at kind of the really the human issues and how we help the society and, and these kind of things, and, and and make that kind of a great experience for everybody. So. Uh, Thank you again. Excellent. Well done, Richard. Thank you. Take care.